All right, I've seen a lot of ridiculous things on TikTok, but this probably is one of the most ridiculous. Okay. Now, in this town hall meeting in Chicago, Illinois, we're going to hear from Al Sharpton and attorney Benjamin Crump. Uh, that's the family's attorney for Sonia Massey. Um, they're going to let the kids speak. And the daughter actually and the mom have some very interesting things they have to say. And then two cops are going to respond. Check it out. Yeah, we must continue to say her name, Sonia Massey. Sonia Massey. Because black women who are killed by police officers in the United States of America rarely, rarely get justice. I mean, your native daughter, Sandra Bland, got no justice. Breonna Taylor, I mean, they had a trial. Nobody was convicted. There was a hung jury. They're going to try again at the end of this year. And if there's no conviction, we doubt Breonna Taylor will ever get justice. A Pamela Turner, Reverend Al, you remember in Houston, did another terrible video where a black woman was shot five times by the police on her back, in her face, in her chest, in her stomach, and nobody goes to jail for killing black women. So that's why we got to keep saying justice for Sonia Massey. Justice for Sonia Massey. Justice for Sonia Now it's a shame. It, this is a crime shame. It, it don't make no sense. It's hard for two parents to, wait to raise a child. Now it's only one parent. You know, it, it, it just, I, I'm lost for words. I showed about the scene first. Her mom called me. And I don't know how I drove there, but I drove there and made it there. And there's so much of a cover up. From when one law enforcement agency lied to the next agency to tell them that she did this to herself. Because they told me that we're investigating it. We know she had problems with the neighbor. It didn't make no sense. Because the neighbor's outside calling my name. Jimmy, Jimmy, I need to talk to you. So how do you get confused with an investigation and you know you killed her yourself? You know you shot this woman and you told another agency that you lied. Now listen to me real carefully. There's two law enforcement agencies, you one line to the next. Who can we trust? Yes. They can't trust one another. Mm. You, you get me? They can't trust one another. When one agency is lying to the next, I get there and they tell me we don't know who did it, we're investigating it, and led them to believe another black woman did it. Mm. My Lord. And I knew it didn't make no sense because the black woman outside calling my name. She wanted to tell me what she saw. Sonia called me any time that she had an accomplishment, she was so proud and she would call me. And the only thing she talked about was her accomplishments, her kids, and God. Uh, Sonia loved her kids. She yeah. loved them. And Summer and Malachi, uh, I call them daily. And to hear them say that they're having nightmares and not being able to sleep just breaks my heart. Yes, if you want to say it. This is uh, Sonia's mother, Donna Massey. They said Sonia had mental issues. Uh, what started it was she started getting a feeling. She kept telling us, Mom, I'm going to die. Mom, I'm going to die. I said, stop saying that because it didn't happen. She said it four days, all day, to me and Malachi. And we thought we were triggering her. She kept saying, why are you mad at me? We said, we're not mad at you. She said, but I'm going to die. And she told us over and over and over for four days, and then she was dead in four days. <laughs> we're so sorry, Miss Donna. <laughs> um, they called me at 5 o'clock in the morning after I had dropped my dad off at work, and they had told me that my mom has been shot in her eye, and it came out the back of her neck. And they didn't know who shot her. And all I'm doing is asking, who shot her? Who shot her? All they would say is somebody shot her. That's what they kept on telling me. So, of course, we I think an intruder came and shot her or something because I got a text message from her that night that somebody was at the back door. But I would have never in the world thought the police shot my mom. Like, how? My love. How? The last thing. 
thing my mom told me when she talked to me is that she gave me specific names. I'm gonna tell y'all, but she did tell me that the police is gonna kill her or the other people. And I'm like, why is that? And then after that, I didn't talk to her until like about two days later. And she was like, she had told me her, her exact words is they gonna kill mommy, baby. And I got mad. We had gotten to it. And I'm like, stop saying that because you're gonna speak down upon yourself. And then the day, like 30 minutes before she died, she called me and she texted me asking what I was doing. But I didn't reply because I was asleep. But the day before that, I talked to her. She was like, I love you. She always just kept saying, I love you. I love you. And then she texted me. She said, God always wins and mom loves you. And then I was supposed to go home with her that night too. But I was like, no, no, because I knew something was off. I was like, I'm just having my dad bring me in the morning. And the next morning came, like, if I that morning, I told my dad I tried to call my mom back. And then that's when he told me that she was killed. If you know that a law enforcement, a sheriff's deputy, kill somebody, how do you call them? Not come by from the sheriff's office. Yeah. Not visit them. How do you call them a strange person on the phone mm. saying your mother got shot through the eye? The callous insensitivity here yeah. is, is, is very striking to me. Yeah. If it was the other way around, they would have went to the house yeah. and sat down with the family yeah. and prepared them for that. And do you need assistance? Right. A phone call oh, right. from a stranger. You don't even know if it's a prank call. And then lied about who did it is also part of what needs to be a part of this investigation. You know, many people say she had a premonition right. when you watch that video. She came to the front porch saying, God help me, God help me. Mm. She was on the couch saying, I need my Bible. I need my Bible while they were yeah. trying to ask the questions. I need my Bible. And then when she was following his instructions, getting the powder water, what was she saying? I rebuke you in the, in the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Almost as if she knew that she was going to be killed by this officer. I mean, when you look at that video, it is really... First of all, Rebuking somebody in the name of Jesus is not a threat. Second of all, boiling water when left alone is not necessarily going to cause a fire. More or less, it's just going to evaporate all the water over time. Unless it's overflowing boiling water onto something that it could catch on fire, that's a different story. So that being said, there was no reason for her to go over to the boiling water in the first place. You just basically put her in a situation that created a more volatile environment for everybody involved. Thirdly, bending down, somebody bending down, does not give you the right to shoot them, right? Common sense. Additionally, I wear a body camera. It's the same model, I'm pretty sure. Um, this is the, the lens, obviously, as you can see. And these are my eyeballs. So if you understand basic geometry, you would understand that my eyeballs are seeing at a different angle than this lens. This officer is over six feet tall, would give him an, um, enough height over this counter to be able to see her, even if she bent down she could probably lay down where she was because she was far enough away from the counter. He probably still would be able to see her a little bit, okay? And guess what? If she's laying down behind the counter, what threat is she really? And the irony lies in the fact that you wouldn't let anybody stitch your video because you know that what you're saying is stupid and you're just trying to get attention. Please be better, okay? We all need to be better. We lack morality in our society. And the fact that you're trying to get attention off of this situation, especially just spewing BS about it, is just disgusting. You should be ashamed of yourself. And the fact that I'm even making this, I don't even want to make this TikTok, but I feel like I have to. In all seriousness, just so we're clear, myself and every other police officer in America, in the world, I hope, does not condone, we condemn this behavior, right? This was straight up murder. This did not need to happen. This is an innocent life lost for no reason, okay? Just so we're clear, we're clear. Some of y'all have tagged me and some of you have messaged me for my take on the incident that happened in Springfield, Illinois. And my take is this. Uh, Miss Sonia Massey had some things going on. That night it appeared Miss Massey needed help. But instead, Miss Massey was murdered. That's my short take on it. Cut and dry. She was murdered by a thug that had a badge and gun and an evil spirit. The longer version 
is I watched this video. I had to rewatch it to make sure I saw what I thought I saw the first time. And it really bothered me, as I know it bothered you if you've seen it. I fast forwarded to the part right before he shot, put my ear to the phone, closed my eyes. For some reason, I think I can hear better when I do that to make sure I heard the back and forth like I thought I did. Let's rewind. First off, the guy that shot her was already a little ticked over asking her for her license and she couldn't find it. First off, she didn't have to give him her license. She was in her home. In her home. There was no reason for her to give him her license. Fast forward. Pot of water. His partner is the one that told her to go around there and get it. He's standing pretty close. Situational awareness. He backs up and moves off to the side, kind of chuckling about it. He didn't fear her, but he wasn't taking any chances at all. Completely understandable. She asks, where are you going? He says, away from your hot steaming water. Then she says, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. But she's not talking to that guy. She's looking at the guy that ends up shooting her. He says, huh? She says, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. This sets him off. I rewatched it. I listened. I rewatched it over and over. She is not trying to close the gap on him. She is not drawing back to throw the hot water on him. He goes off at being rebuked. I believe this wholeheartedly. Y'all can make fun of me if you want to. I believe this. What does he say? You better effing not, or I swear to God, I will shoot you in the effing face. At which point, she's scared to death. Pot goes on the counter. Nothing in her hand. She cowers down, understandably. He saw her put the pot down. He keeps saying, drop the pot, drop the pot, drop the pot. She starts peeking back up. What does he do? Still nothing in her hands. Pot's still on the counter. He follows through what he told her he was going to do. He shot her in the effing face. Murder. During the aftermath, does not administer aid, discourages his partner from administering aid, says on the radio, yeah, she's still breathing, but she's losing a lot of blood. No remorse. Nothing. This guy should have never been in law enforcement, and he deserves to be in prison for the rest of his life. Law enforcement failed Miss Massey that night. She needed help, but she got murdered instead. That's my take, guys.